Hello there, kia ora. What does the phrase tough on crime actually mean? Because I am convinced that whatever this government's definition of that is, it's well, more wrong than Henry Morton's prediction that the light bulb would be an immense failure. But if he predicted that the government's tough on crime stance would be a failure, he'd be right on the money. And therefore actually a really bad example of people getting things terribly wrong. Anyway, this government was in part elected on the refried beans of tough on crime rhetoric that panders to their base by scaring them and blaming all the world's woes on something big and nebulous without actually doing the mahi that would be tough on crime itself by dealing with the drivers of crime. In the lead up to the election, our media was filled with horror stories, particularly around ram raids, that made people feel unsafe, which is a narrative that this government directly pushed to get elected, despite evidence that violent crimes are either static or dropping. Unfortunately, it worked. Certain groups within the voter base kept running with the sky is falling, labor soft on crime lines. But in many ways, being tough on crime is the soft way to handle crime. It's easier to take punitive action than it is to deal with the cause and drivers of crime. And this government has made a big deal about how much they focus on punitive measures over crime drivers and how they'll target specifically narrative-driven ideas behind crime, like gangs bad but 1940s German army insignia, absolutely fine. And the stats released this week show that the impact of that is an increase in violent crime rates. Now, while the National Party say that they would never cherry-pick data for their own purposes, they stood in downtown Auckland and celebrated a decrease in incidents in the area due to increased visibility of the police. Increased police presence, which came at the cost of other areas around Auckland losing beat cops. And the data released showed that while one area of the city might have had a dip, nationally, crime rates were skyrocketing. Almost like threats of more jail time aren't the disincentive the government claims them to be. Because they're not. According to mountains of research from all over the world, including done here in Aotearoa, well, the policies of this government seem to be the actual drivers of crime. But work done by Auckland University last year, for example, showed that within a New Zealand context, drivers for criminal behaviour include substance addiction, family dysfunction, antisocial associates, a history of offending, poverty, housing insecurity, truancy, and the lasting impacts of colonialism. This government has slashed funding to NGO service providers, including many who work in substance and addiction areas and family dysfunction areas. Laws like the gang patch ban tends to solidify antisocial groups who find other ways to build group cohesion in public. By removing the funding for cultural reports, the government stopped looking at the drivers of offending for many people already in the system, so couldn't offer them the help needed to identify and change behaviours. By re-indexing benefits and causing mass layoffs across sectors and giving the lowest minimum wage increase ever seen, this government has started pushing a lower wage economy as prices continue to rise for essentials like food, power, transport and education, forcing people into poverty or keeping them there. By gutting kainga ora, builds and funding to social housing builds and forcing people out of emergency accommodation and not tracking where a third of them have gone and poisoning the construction centre and hobbling first home buyers with the loss of the first home grant, while financially benefiting investment landlords with tax cuts and bright line test changes, or, and giving them the powers of things like no-cause terminations, it creates that housing insecurity. And truancy is often caused, according to the experts, by the same drivers that lead to criminal behaviour. The drivers the government are ignoring or making worse by setting targets that have to be met and not dealing with those causes. The government is not actually tackling truancy directly. And when it comes to colonisation, the most obvious outcome are the inequities in being able to access services and resources to ensure equitable outcomes over generations, which has led to systemic distrust and behaviours that continue a cycle of equitable access and outcomes. By actively removing the policies that were designed to deal directly with those inequitable access points and just declaring that everything's fine, it ensures those inequitable outcomes caused by colonialism will continue to happen. Because when you do nothing, and nothing changes, well, you shouldn't be surprised when that's the outcome. And all of this is before you look at how people under 24 who get locked up are exposed to more serious offending while reinforcing their anti-authority worldview, which makes them more susceptible for gang recruitment.
that statistics show us the longer someone's incarcerated, the harder it is for them to reintegrate into society without proper support and are more likely to reoffend. And that the longer they spend in prison, the more likely they are to create connections that outside prison would decrease how safe the areas they end up in become. Well, how especially in young people, labels like youth offenders shape their self-perspective while already feeling marginalized by society. And because people tend to cling to self-identity, this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy without strong support structures in place. So responses like military boot camps only make these issues worse. No one wants crime, and no one enjoys being the victim of crime. And those who commit crime do need to face the consequences of their actions. But that's the easy part when it comes to crime responses. To be really tough on crime, a government needs to look at the nuance, consider ways to tackle the factors that lead to crime, and give those areas the resources to do the mahi. And it won't mean an immediate plummeting of the crime rates, and it's not a short-term quick fix. But by the government's own numbers, their blunt instrument approach clearly is doing the opposite of bringing down crime rates. If you want to actually be tough on crime, then do the tough things and focus on fixing the things that lead to an increase in crime.